In this video, we're going to look at group 1 elements. Now, group 1 elements are located on the leftmost side of the periodic table. As you can see, in group 1, we have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. However, when we talk about group 1 elements, we are excluding hydrogen here. Hydrogen is the odd one out. Okay, its behavior is different from the other elements in group 1. Okay, so when we refer to group 1 elements, we are referring to lithium to francium. So now they are known as the alkali metals. You will know why later in the video. Group 1 elements are called the alkali metals. Remember group, group 18 elements are called the noble gases. Group 1 elements are referred to the alkali metals. Now when we think about metals, we think about very strong and hard and rigid structures. However, the alkali metals are a bit different. The alkali metals are soft. They can be cut with a knife. So they are shiny when they are cut because they are metals. However, they are so reactive so they will become quickly tarnished if they are left in oxygen, exposed to oxygen. So they are being oxidized. So if you look, if you saw the group 18 uh, elements video, you will already fam be familiar with atomic radius. Now again, atomic radius is important no matter which group you are studying. So atomic radius, once again, is from the center of the atom to the end of the atom, which is the outermost shell, the valence shell. So this is known as the atomic radius. It's the radius of the atom. Now as we go down the group, from lithium to sodium to potassium, once again, as the period number increases, the number of shells will also increase. So if you're comparing potassium, potassium has is in period 3, so potassium has 3 shells. And lithium has, ah, sorry, potassium is in group uh, period 4, right? Because remember, we are not looking at helium. Yes, so potassium is in group 4, so potassium has 4 shells. And lithium is in group 2, there's 2 shells. So the more the number of shells, the bigger the element. Okay, the bigger the size of the atom. So the larger the atomic radius. Okay, so francium will have the largest atomic radius in group 1. And lithium has the smallest atomic radius in group 1. Now looking at the physical properties, again, when we typically, typically think of metals, metals have a very high melting point. Okay, now the typical metals are the actually the transition metals, the transition elements. Okay. When we talk about group 1 metals, their properties, are, a lot of them are opposite. Just like just now, it's actually very soft. Now here, once again, it has a very low melting point okay, compared to most metals. And as we go down the group, the melting point decreases. Now this is opposite to group 18 elements. Okay. Now once again, if you haven't watched, please watch group 18 elements video. So the melting point decreases here. Why? Now, if you remember in group 18, group 18 elements are held together by weak van der Waal forces of attraction. However, in group 1, for group 1 elements, they are held together by metallic bonds, something known as metallic bonds, a different type of bonds. Okay, And these bonds behave differently compared to van der Waals forces of attraction. When the atomic radius increases, the strength of the metallic bond will decrease as opposed to Van der Waals. When the atomic size increases for Van der Waals forces of attraction will also increase. Right? It's the opposite here. So let's look at all the elements. So as we go down the group, now as we go down the group, the period number increases the atomic radius will also increase. So cesium is bigger than potassium. So cesium will have weaker metallic bonds compared to potassium. And therefore, cesium will have a lower melting point compared to potassium. Okay, so they have very low densities as well. Again, when you typically think about metals, you think about 
putting a metal ruler in water, obviously we expect the ruler to sink. However, for your alkali metals, they show very low densities. So, but the densities will increase down the group. As the relative atomic mass increases, the density will increase as, will increase as well. Now, lithium, sodium and potassium are so, they have such a low density that they actually float on water. So these metals float on water, lithium, sodium and potassium, they can float on water. Now, since they are metals, of course, we expect them to be good conductors of heat and electricity. This is one characteristic that is uh, consistent with all metals, good conductor of heat and electricity. So when we talk about reactivity of group 1 elements, now group 1 elements are very, very reactive. Okay? Compared to group 18 elements, group 18 elements are completely unreactive. They do not react at all. Do you remember why? It's because they already have a stable electron configuration. Okay? They, they already have full outer electron shells. So they do not need to gain or lose electrons. So group 1 elements. Group 1 means the number of valence electrons will be 1 as well. Okay, now when we have 1 valence electron, remember the stable electron configuration is either 2, if it, did, if it is going to assume the electron configuration of helium, or 8. For everything else so in order to become 8 the group 1 elements except for lithium will need to lose one electron okay we'll get into that later so they are very very reactive they react easily with air water and group 17 elements now they, in fact they're so reactive that they need to be stored in paraffin oil so if you've seen your teacher handle alkali metals in the lab Okay, first of all, we use tongs and they cannot, the, the, the alkali metal will be stored in oil. Okay, you may see it looks clear, sometimes you use kerosene. It is actually not water, it's oil. It's so reactive that you expose it to air, it will react. Okay, okay so now we are going to talk a little bit about electropositivity. Okay, so alkali metals are actually electropositive. In fact, they are the most electropositive elements in the periodic table. Okay, now, what does this word mean? Electropositive. Now, electropositive means they have a high tendency to donate electrons. Okay, remember it like this. Electropositive. Okay, when we say an element is electropositive, that means, remember it as having the ability to become positive. Now, how does any element become positive? The only way is by donating electrons. When you lose one electron, you become positive. When you gain an electron, now you have more negative than positive. So you are negative. Your overall charge is negative. When you lose electrons, you have more protons compared to electrons. So your overall charge will be positive. So alkali metals, all the electron uh, configuration will be 2, 1, 2, 8, 1, 2, 8, 8, 1. Okay? So their outer shell has one electron. So they easily, they just have to donate that one electron to become stable. So they all form positive ions because they donate electrons okay so this is how you write donating electrons giving away electrons in chemical equations we never use minus so actually this should be m represents group one elements alkali metals so it should be m minus electron on the left However, in chemistry, we don't use minus. Huh? So, instead of minus electron on the left, we write plus electron on the right. So, this is the chemical equation for loss of electron. So, lithium metal will lose one electron to form lithium ion. All the ions, group 1 ions, uh, ions of group 1 elements will be 1 plus. 
the charge will be one plus because they only lose one electron. Okay. Now the reactivity will increase down the group. We're going to look at why here. So they lose electrons easily to form ions. Now going from top to bottom, that means from lithium to sodium to potassium to rubidium to cesium to francium, going down, the metals become bigger. Okay. So when they become bigger, the outer electron gets further and further away from the nucleus. Now look here. So from lithium to sodium to potassium, they become bigger and bigger. Now, this red arrow here represents the distance between the nucleus, the center of the nucleus, where all the protons are, to the valence electron, the outermost electron. Now, as you can see, the distance will increase as we go down the group because the atomic radius increases. So, what is the consequence of this? Now, imagine two uh, magnets, okay, when they are close together they have a strong attraction you put them slightly further apart the attraction becomes weak you put them even further apart the attraction becomes even weaker so you can think of it like that as the electrons the outer shell valence electron moves further and further away from the nucleus the electron becomes the uh, attraction becomes weaker and weaker now what happens when it becomes weaker and weaker they will be more easily removed the further it is from the nucleus, the valence electron, the further it is from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove it to form the positive ions. So now, again, I've discussed this in the group 18 elements video. All reactions involve movement of electrons, gain of electrons, loss of electrons or sharing electrons. So if it loses electrons easily, to form ions, then it is also more reactive. So again, if it loses electrons more easily, it means it's more reactive. Okay, so as we go down the group, it becomes more and more reactive. Cesium will be more reactive than potassium or sodium or rubidium. The larger the metal ion, the easier it is to react with other elements to form compounds. So reactivity increases down the group.